Welcome to the video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the 250 class frame. It has a hinge at the front, which allows the whole top to lift up. And it's unlike any other frame that we've had a look at. Now, I need to say a big thank you to banggood.com for sending this to us, because this is something that we've been asked for by a subscriber to take a look at. So here is how it appears in the box. It's quite a small box and um, has all of the details on the back about how it's actually built. It is a 250 class quad and we'll look at the actual weight at the end of the video. But you'll be surprised how light the box is when you first pick it up. So let's open it and take the pieces out and see what we actually get. And then we'll put this thing together and have a look at it when it's built. So we have the legs here and also the stuff for the battery. Here we have the canopy, so we have the top bit and the side bits as well. It's relatively thin plastic, it's a cosmetic piece, so I imagine that will probably not survive hard crashes very well. So I'll probably get some spares of those. Then we have all of the other pieces, so these are the side bits, the bit to mount the FPV equipment on, the, the camera mount and all the other bits as well, so those will go on the side. And then finally we have the main thing itself. Now the frame is so light it doesn't have any uh, kind of weight in it at all. We have a couple of connectors that go to the back for the ESCs. We have a XT60 at the back for power and a very simple power distribution board that runs along the bottom. We got a couple of extra cables here to plug those leads from the PDB to the back speed controllers into our flight controller as well. So you can see here in its unbuilt state, we've got to put the arms on. Uh, we've also got to put the top on as well, but it's really small and very, very light indeed. The carbon fiber is not particularly thick, but the way it puts together is uh, creates quite a rigid construction. So what we'll actually do is let me get all of the different pieces out. We'll lay it out on the mat. And what I'll do is I'll actually build it. The build instructions are available from the banggood.com website. I'll put a link in the description below. But hopefully by following those, we'll be able to get this thing together. So here on the mat, we have our main frame. Uh, we're going to put the arms and everything onto that. Then we actually have the arms themselves. We have two front ones and two rear ones. Then we have the two sides. Uh, they're going to go each side and actually connect to the bits of the front. We have the two connectors for the GPS and FPV gear. Then we have the bits that we've just seen. And again, really flimsy plastic, but look really nice. They'll go over the front and also on the sides. Put that down. Then we have the legs or the feet, which are just foam bits. The bits to actually mount and space the top parts. And then we have a battery strap with tarot printed on it little bag of plastic mounts these are for the green canopy in my case you can also get different colors as well and then you also have this piece which is like an anti-slip piece for the battery i'll probably use velcro so first thing we'll do then is let me clear this away and we'll put the front two arms on the model and we'll come back and have a look so here they are fitted. All you do is you undo the three bolts here, the two at the bottom of the frame and the one out on the arm. You just pop the arms on, make sure they're swept forward slightly and do them up. The back is going to be fitted exactly the same. It's going to go under this metal bracket. And again, they're going to sweep outward slightly. So let me just undo these and we'll have a go at putting these on too. So that's very quick and easy to do. Uh, just a one and a half and two millimeter hex driver allows you to spin these out. These are metal screws going into metal catching bits and pieces. So I would say that uh, make sure you are using Loctite on these. Uh, still so light and we've got to put this top part on next. So what I'll do is let me put this to the side. We're going to open this bag of bits and spacers. And then what we need to do is kind of uh, build this up. So we're going to have to have each of these side by side. We've got a bit at the top here for the FPV mount. Oops, there we go. And then at the back, we also have the bit for a GPS mount as well. A nice idea. This is going to allow us to space everything out in the frame, even though it's very, very small. We'll need a couple of these to actually space around. Again, no build instructions I can find. So I'm kind of making this up a little bit. So here we have it all plugged in. So the front part is a special one that has bolts at the side. So you can actually mount the camera bit. Then you have these other two here. You have one at the very back hole and one at the halfway up the front. Now those will actually support the sides. 
then we need to put these two pieces in here Whoop. and then we're going to put the other side on first but before I do that let me actually just stop it and what I want to do is just go and start putting these pieces on now there are two holes here at the front which line up with this part of the canopy so once you've got that dead easy to do all we're going to do is also pop in a couple of these black screws the little nylon numbers you just push them through and then the other one a bit stiffer and then on the inside they just poke through just enough so that you can get one of these little black nylon nuts that comes into the kit on there uh, it's a bit tight but if you're careful with your fingers you'll be able to fit it on and then the side part goes on here and you'll notice the three holes to mount it on the top one is actually going to mount flush and the bottom two are actually going to be slightly proud of the top to give it the shape now to actually have those pieces proud on the top we're going to need these little spacers that are in the kit so we're going to have to pop these spacers behind these screw them onto the chassis and then screw either side and that will keep that lovely shape so let me go and do that and we'll come back and have a look so here it is all built just put the screws in the other side and we've put the other pieces on as well just one last thing I'm going to show you here's the um, the two mounts for the other side of the canopy we need to put the pivot here at the front that's one of the last things we need to do so what I've done is I actually removed it from the bottom plate it wasn't particularly um, hard you can see here that the bolt has two little nylon washers and the way we need to use these these washers are going to be um, kind of like the bearings that will allow everything to move so what we need to do is make sure there's at least one washer on the outside of the carbon fiber plate let me just screw this through the hole is just the right size and then we get one of the other nylon washers just pop that on the other side of the carbon fiber top frame and then we can screw that into the bar itself and then once we've done that we can do the other side and it's just a case of screwing this onto the bottom of the frame so let me finish that up and we'll come back and see what that looks like so here it is all built there's that little bit at the front just held on by those two screws so now we've got it together let's have a look at what it's like and what we like about it so it looks unlike any two 50 class quad that I've got it almost looks like some kind of wacky beetle I love the idea that you can actually have different colored canopies on this because it does mean that you can race them and see which one's yours there's the camera mount at the front it's quite deep in there so you could mount the camera either behind or in front of the hole you can also uh, set your tilt battery goes in here the little simple power distribution board at the bottom is just enough the space at the front to connect your ESCs and at the back and it puts the power up into the model as well which is nice that'll be useful for battery monitoring the signals for the ESC go along here around the back and then they're presented up so we can connect them to the flight controller very simple but very nice idea the feet are just these foam pieces which just stick on to the underneath of the arms so just stick them on they're very very light so I'll do that in a minute and then if I actually take the top canopy off I'll show you how it moves now the way it's held on is two little carbon fiber uh, slots here so you just pull these pieces out and the whole thing tilts forward so here on this plate we have all of our room for maybe the OSD but also the flight controller and then on top we have our room for the GPS at the back the FPV stuff at the top which is perfect right out the way of everything else and it's all nicely spaced out really nice idea the battery compartment isn't big enough for a 220 class size battery let me just try and put these back on don't know how um, rough you could be with these I don't imagine too rough else you'll snap everything um, I imagine you're looking at the smaller size batteries because this is really designed to be an out and out racer so just be careful you just have to pull these little tabs out and it'll snap back into position so hopefully that's useful for those of you that are looking at this so again thank you very much to banggood.com for sending it to me I think there's only one last thing to try and that's to pop this little guy on some scales and see how much he actually weighs
So here we are. It's about 130, 138 grams, 139 grams. I've even put the little uh, feet on here, and the, I've managed to end up with a spare spacer somehow. I'll just pop that on there as well in case you find a place to put it. It's about 140 grams all up. So in conclusion, let's have a look at it compared with some of the other 250 class racers that are out there. Now, admittedly, some of the ones around here are more 280 class and slightly bigger, but that's part of the fun. It's a little bit different. However, we have a ZMR 250, QAV 250, and a Nighthawk Pro here as well. On this model, we can't use exactly the same stuff. It's too small. So one of the things that you have to be aware of if you're looking at this is the two millimeter arms are not going to be as robust as some of these other models that have kind of two and a half and three millimeter carbon fiber arms. So you do have to be careful of that. It might not crash as well. We are going to build this, and what I've had to order is some 1806 motors that so goes out on the tips of the arms, because the mounting holes here will only kind of support a 12 and 16 millimeter mount style, so it has to be an 1806 style motor really to fit. The spaces for the ESCs, which looks like they go underneath these little kind of vented canopies at the side above the arms, um, would have to be very low profile as well. Now there's nothing to stop us zip tying larger ESCs on top of that, but if you want to preserve the very sleek look of this, then you're looking for the really small low profile ESCs. The other thing you have to be careful of is, as we said, batteries that I use on all my others aren't going to fit this. I'm going to need to use a smaller class, but then if we're using 1806 motors, we should be able to still get decent flight times out of it. And last of all, the actual fitting of the flight controller on the top here, you do have to think about that. So let me just grab one of the flight controllers and I'll show you what I mean. So although you can absolutely mount your flight controller on here, you do need to be very careful and using vertical or side pins, because if you're using pins that stick out the side, this is a little NAS A32, it won't be able to close the canopy very well. It'll interfere with it. So there's a couple of considerations for such a small model. So although it's a 250 size, you can get 280 versions as well. Think about that. Make sure that you're ordering the 1806, five inch props and also think about your flight controller and how you're going to mount that too. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, Subscribe and happy flying.